So today I have with me Bronwyn, and I got that correct, right? So, yes, yeah. you did. All right, good, good. <laughs> so uh, she's all the way from Australia, and I'm here on the East Coast in the United States, so she gets to see what's happening later on in my day, I guess, or when I wake up, we'll see. But uh, anyways, it's great to have her on. Uh, I know she's got an incredible journey to share, and I just want to share that we were able to connect through a, a group on Facebook through BL BLN. And, you know, we connected and we got to know each other just a little bit. And i like you to start opening up with, you know, who, telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and you can start with what you're doing. And then we can go back into what, you know, how you got to where you are. Okay, great. Thank you so much, John. All right. So I am Bronwyn schumpf Glidden, and I run a company called Evertree Solutions. And what I do here is um, I'm a permaculture business coach. Um, that usually draws a lot of blank looks uh, for people who don't know what permaculture is. Uh, but permaculture is a uh, a movement that started back in the 70s of uh, living in harmony with the earth and uh, using a, a framework of design principles and uh, teachings and understandings that a lot of them were, were um, adapted from ancient cultures and how they live with the land and live with the uh, environment and and not trying to impose their um, their changes on the landscape around them. And so this um, framework of understanding this um, it, it starts with gardening really um, in producing your own food and you know getting back to that core essential need in life. But the the principles and the ethics and the understandings can be applied to every single aspect of life and society. And in my former um, life as, well, what I was doing before being a business coach, um, I could see the business wisdom that you could find in permaculture. And so I found how to really mesh the two of, of business coaching and introducing these permaculture principles. And so that helps businesses to become more sustainable and it helps businesses to run in a more harmonious way this isn't for people who are all about wanting to you know make as much money as they can this is for people who understand that there's more to life than just making money when you need balance and you need harmony and you need to live in alignment with your core values and so yeah that's been a really fun journey for me um to to become you know find myself here at this point in time but it's been a massive um journey a bit of a roller roller coaster to get here yeah and so let, let, you go you start wherever you like with that roller coaster that you call um okay go ahead all right so um uh, I'm, I'm gonna compact it um because i've got to go right back to um being at high school Mm -hmm. and um I'll, I'll compact it and then i'll sort of ex you know pull bits apart and, and explain in more detail but if we go right back to high school i um so my parents actually lived in california when i was born um and then we when my my oldest brother uh hit high school we ended up moving back to australia and so um for for me you know it was it was a regular normal childhood regular normal you know nothing really uh, significantly uh out of the ordinary uh i got to uh high school and um i was a teenager you know i was uh i found my rebellious streak and um uh, so when it got to, I was 15, 16, and I ended up leaving home because I, I wanted to be independent. I wanted to do things my own way. Uh, I thought I knew better. And um, so I was living, uh, I was I was able to find uh, some youth accommodation and uh, was still going to school, but, you know, um, it's a lot harder to focus on your schoolwork when you know, you've sort of gotten into this life of, you know, trying to run your own place and, you know, deal with 
groceries and cooking dinners and laundry and all that stuff. Uh, so I wasn't at all prepared for that. And the way it ended up happening was uh, in my senior year. So in Australia, um, the school system, uh, high school is, is from year seven to year 12. And uh, I got halfway through year 12. Uh, so in, in year 11, my final exams were great, you know, top of the class. And then halfway through year 12, getting ready for those final exams for year 12, and I drop out. Um, it all just got a bit too much. And, um, I, you know, I remember so clearly my um, student counsellor just pleading with me, just, you know, you're so close. Uh, just hang in there, get these exams done, you know, and you'll be fine. Because, you know, I really had what I thought was a really bright future ahead of me. Um, I I wanted to be an architect. Just absolutely loved the idea of um, going to university and learning architecture. And then, you know, I went through this really confusing phase. Um, that focus changed to then wanting to be a fashion designer. And, and that was that was really cool too. I really could have done something with that too. Um, and, and then always in the background was um, this uh, idea that I had that, you know, I could be a concert pianist. Uh, I've been playing the piano since I was four years old and was really quite accomplished. And so either one of those three, I could have really pursued and done some amazing things with. But, you know, being a confused 16-year-old, 17-year-old, um, I left school and um, went on the dole you know, on unemployment benefits. And um, it was funny how that that choice, I didn't realise the impact that choice was going to have on my self-esteem and my, self, uh, my belief in what I could achieve. Um, you know, so I ended up, I, I got a job and I was working in retail and um, so things were, you know, going along. I met my husband. Um, we got married had kids well we, we had a son um and in you know trying to find work and everything like that I I always had this mental ceiling of you know I can't do that because I didn't go to university I didn't get a degree um I'm you know up against people that went to university and that means I'm not I'm not as good as them mm. so uh I got into um, like office administration, accounts, uh, bookkeeping. Um, my husband and I separated for a time. Uh, he moved across the country. I was in the eastern states in in, uh, in Melbourne, in Australia. And when we separated, he moved across the country to Western Australia, which is a whole state on, on its own, um, but uh clear across the other side of the country. And a year later, I followed with our son and we managed to work things out. I got a job over there and then we proceeded to have another three children. So here I am, I'm a wife, I'm a mother of four. Um, and when my second son was born, um, so yeah, this is the, the second child, soon after arriving in Western Australia, um, I decided, no, I'm, I'm done doing that um, working mom thing. And so I quit. I told my boss I quit. I just want to be a stay-at-home mom and just do, you know, look after my kid. Because with my first son, you know, I did what everyone did at that time, um, was you put your kid in daycare and go back to work. And so he was three months old when he went into daycare and I was back at work. Uh, and I always regretted that. I thought, no, my, my son needs me to be a mom. So when my second child came along, I said, no, I quit. And he said, please, please, no, no, no. We, we really, really want you to stay. So how about you work from home? And, you know, what he had in mind was that I would be, you know, still employed by them, but just working from home. But I saw this as an opportunity to start my own business. And so I did. I started a bookkeeping service and uh, just did that from home around the kids. And even when my my other two children were born, um, you know, I didn't really sort of take time off, you know, it's really easy with the work that I do. Um, you can do it in your, um, you can do it in 
the time around the kids. You can do it early morning, late at night, um, and it's just sitting at a computer. So it wasn't very physically demanding. So I was able to keep up with that work. And so that was really good. And, and I had a really good client base. I had wonderful clients, um, managed to keep a client retention rate of like 93%. Um, you know, and, and I'm still working with some of those clients that I started working with. This is now 18 years ago. So that's, you know, I thought that was, that's a real feather in my cap and that's really good. Um, then we get to the point in time when I, so this was around about maybe 10 years ago. I started thinking I can do more than just data entry and, you know, doing this, this bookkeeping work. I, I can, you know, I've gained a lot of uh, insights into the, the sorts of things that I'm doing. And um, that means that I can, uh, you know, offer consulting or something like that. You know, I can start giving some advice because I've, I've been around businesses for a long time. These are all small businesses. I understand the, the language. I understand the pressures and the challenges and the financial information. And so I started sort of exploring how am I going to, to offer this um, now, where I live, um, I live in a little country town in Western Australia. It's about an hour and a half south of Perth and very small um, community, very small population. And so I thought, you know, anything that I do needs to be online because there's just not enough of a population to support my business. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is I could do like a an online course where I'm teaching small business owners um, how to understand their numbers you know there's so many people that I would talk to and they say oh I'm just not a numbers person and and just just say it and dismiss it so easily and I thought no you know you can't just not be a numbers person if you're running a business you have to know your numbers you have to understand what's happening in your numbers and you know here I can show you how so I, I, I had developed this um, online course to help people understand and you know it was really it had a lot of um, good content there but I just it just wasn't working for me. And I was really trying to find just how am I going to do this? Um, how am I going to offer more to my clients? Uh, it was a really difficult um, period of time in trying to figure out uh, how to to grow a business, how to be more than, than just the data entry bookkeeper. And so then I found coaching and right when I started exploring coaching and, and is this something that I could pursue, that was when my husband just left. Out of the blue, it was like overnight. It hit me without any warning at all. Um, and that completely destroyed me. You know, up until then, I, I, I had my identity completely mapped out as being wife and mother and running this business as well. But, you know, I, I was not at all prepared for a possibility of not being his wife. Um, and so I found that completely earth shattering. Um, but in needing to heal, um, I, I have a very strong faith and I know that healing comes from forgiveness and forgiveness is the is the gateway to healing and so I knew intellectually I knew I need to forgive him I need to forgive him for his broken promises and betrayal like you know he moved in with um someone I thought was my friend I need to do for, forgive her as well um but that's really really hard when you know everything's just so raw uh but in doing the things that a, a for, that someone who has forgiven that person in doing those things and saying those things that that person would say or do it started to work uh it was really hard but you know th th there's sort of a saying um that goes fake it till you make it and and that's just what i kept telling myself it's just like even if you know these words aren't coming from my heart of saying i forgive you um, I still need to say it and I still need to do what that looks like. And in time, in a very short space of time, it worked. Um, and I was able to say quite honestly and genuinely, 
I forgive you. It's okay. I release you from, um, it, it's, it doesn't excuse anything that he did, but it releases me from holding on to that pain. And so that was that was really critical. Uh, that was a real turning point in my life. Um, so I healed really remarkably um, in the end. Uh, it was it was really great, and I found that I have this whole new um, whole new lease on life. A whole new um, you know I, I I can do anything. You know the whole world is before me. My whole future has been in front of me. And then I met up with all right so um my ex moved in with someone I thought was my friend um she had earlier that year left her partner and I ran into him and said you know we need to catch up you know we have a few things in common you know uh being left the way we were and everything like that and um and so we, we caught up and it was it was so funny because I said the first time that we caught up uh I said we're just friends. I'll just, you know, make that really clear right now. We're just friends. Nothing's going to happen. Uh, I don't do sex outside marriage and, you know, I'm not getting married. So, you know, we're just friends and I'm here as a, a shoulder. I'm here to to talk to, I understand what you're going through. And he was saying the same. He's like, you know, I'm done with women, you know, we're just friends. That's, that's it. Nothing more. And I think maybe because of that, uh, foundation. Um, there was no expectations. There was no trying to impress someone. So we just got really honest with each other. And yeah, within two months we were engaged. <laughs> so um, yeah, so th that's a bit of how the whole story is going, um, the whole life story. But in in all, in with all of that, remember I had, I had been trying to um, build my business and I had just started discovering what coaching was and so I went along to this coaching uh, workshop that this um, educational facility was was running and 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 I told my um, future new husband I said I'm going to this coaching thing they're going to try and sell me this really expensive coaching program but it's okay don't worry I'm not going to get sucked in I'm just going to get as much free advice as I can and I signed up for that course in the first break because I went along and I just knew so powerfully that this is what I have to do. And, you know, it was really expensive. I had to pay for the complete coaching program as well as uh, airfares to Sydney across the country and accommodation. And I needed to raise $7,000 in a week. Um, I used my mortgage payment to pay the deposit on this and I'm totally freaking out. I was, I was like, I was as inspired as I was terrified. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just knew that I have to do this. This is my, my way forward. It, it, every cell in my being just said, you have to do this, but I don't know how. Anyway, so I put out the call to my family and friends and just through family and friends within 24 hours, I raised $7,000 because everyone knew what I was going through. And they said, you know, yeah, we support you. We want you to do this. For some people, it was $100. For some, it was $1,000. Um, but it was just so wonderful to get that kind of support from, from these people who, who love me, and now I love them. So I went and learned up learned how to become a coach. And um, and that was just, yeah, so that was four years ago. Uh, and now you can't become a coach without going through that whole coaching process yourself. And I found that was so transformational. Like it added to the healing that I had already started in healing from the from the breakup. Uh, it was it was really wonderful and beautiful, and it helped me to um, really get a sense of my identity, what my core values are, uh, and what what's really important to me. And that's when permaculture came into it. I realized that I really am this hippie chick who just loves Earth and loves nature and loves doing everything the way nature would want us to do it. Um, and so when I found permaculture, again, I signed up to do the training. Uh, so with permaculture, the, the, the step one of the, the formal education is a permaculture design certificate. And, and I signed up to do that still, it was, it was still, you know, a couple thousand dollars to do that. And uh, I thought, you know, where am I going to get this money from? And, there was a point in time when I had to pay the deposit to secure my spot. 
and and I had this hesitation of, oh, but what if this doesn't work out? And then almost instantly, this voice comes inside my head and says, if I'm going to do it, I need to act as though I already have. Just exactly the same as when I was forgiving my ex. And, and so with that understanding, I paid the deposit. Here we go. Let's do this. And then every single moment of that course in learning permaculture just confirmed to me that this is what I've been wanting to do my whole life. Uh, I, I, I never knew what it was called. Um, it, you know, it began the same time that I was born in mid seventies. Um, and so I thought that was really cool that, you know, this has been around and I, I just never heard of it. I, I understood the principles. I understood like a lot of it was just um, common sense to me. It was like this innate knowledge that this is how you do things. Um, and so that was really cool. So now I've got this coaching business that I had started and I've got this permaculture passion and for a little period of time it felt like they were sort of at odds with each other not maybe not at odds but they were like um chalk and cheese just completely unrelated and, and I thought no I can do better than this and then one of the permaculture principles is obtain a yield meaning that in the garden you know if you're going to put work into uh, raising your vegetables you want to get a, a yield at the end of it you want to get a harvest but for me, that says turn a profit. Um, that's like, you know, of course, when, you know, when you're in business, you do it to, to make a profit. And so from there, I looked at all of those permaculture principles of um, observe and interact and catching and storing energy and using renewable resources and um, creatively responding to change. All of these, these principles that you would use in uh, designing a, a garden setting, um, I, I could see that, yeah, okay, these these principles, they are completely, completely applicable to applying to a business. And you could use, you know, take any situation, any challenge that you're having in your business, and there will be a perma permaculture principle that will provide a perspective of, um, of how you should respond and move forward. And so that's where this um, coaching that I offer now came from. And yeah, that's really cool. So a couple of the things that I thought would be particularly relevant if we if we're talking about life's check marks is I had this um, completely black and white picture of getting a university degree to be able to um, have any sort of credibility and not finishing high school, not going to university. It, it took me decades to realize that that's, that's just not the case. I know a lot of people uh, find a lot of success in completing university. And my son just last week um, graduated from, from getting his uh, bachelor in information technology. And I was so super proud. You know, I was, I was sharing photos all over the place with everyone I could think of. Um, I was so super proud of him. And, and I guess for me, uh, his graduation was like, you know, he was doing it vicariously. I was doing it vicariously through him. <laughs> you know, it was like that, that was my my university um, degree that I never got to have. But, you know, even my son says that the, the job that he has now, he didn't actually need that degree to get. It does help, um, but it, it was just so... Um, eye-opening to to discover that you know yeah he he put in the hard yards and he he did the work and studied and you know got the degree but even straight after that he says well you know I've got the certificate but you know it doesn't really mean that I can't do anything without it mm -hmm. but that was yeah that was something that held me back for decades um and then you know and like I'm, I'm talking to people that have those university degrees and masters and um and they're saying oh, you know Bronwyn your experience is just so phenomenal you you know so much about so many things because of all the experience that you've had because I've been working since you know I, I dropped out of high school and um they're saying you know I didn't learn that at school 
and you know that this this understanding that you have with you know that the accounting software programs and the the um things that I've learned about business um they don't teach you that in school so yeah I, I thought oh okay well that's that's pretty cool um and the other the other life check mark that um I had to really um redefine my for myself was of being a wife and a mother and I am still a mother and uh a, a saying that I started saying this is going back 10 years or more I would say that being a mother is by far absolutely hands down the most important thing I will do it's just not the only thing I do mm -hmm. and so that would justify anything that I was doing in trying to build a business and um you know taking on all these committee positions I'm a bit of a, a sucker for committees I'm on three committees now um and you know it's I found it's really important to you know contribute to you know your local community to run a business to be uh you know a breadwinner to be a a provider for your family um and not only that but to, to be a a significant person in the community or in business or something like that. Um, you know, being a mother doesn't stop me from doing anything else, it, but just helps me to remember that being a mother is the most important thing I will ever do. And my kids understand that completely. Um, so as far as being the wife, though, um, when I met my ex-husband, I never really did discover my true identity uh going through those those difficult teenage years back when i left school i, I didn't know who i was like I, I went through a phase of being a hippie being a goth being a punk you know i tried everything um and and this was all in this search for finding out who i am and and then i met i met josh my husband my ex-husband and so for for 25 years it was fine to just see myself as Josh's wife. Um, he provided that identity for me. Um, and so when he left, uh, I, I took back my maiden name, Chomp. And that was really powerful. I remember it so clearly. It was, it was, it was an Easter Sunday um, in 2020. And I'd made that decision. No, I'm going to take back my, my maiden name. And I was so surprised I was not expecting the impact it had on my sense of identity I was reclaiming my my identity and so when I remarried my second husband um I thought I'm not going to give that up that means something to me that 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 chomp surname you know I have there's a heritage there um there's there's really there's a lot there that I'm not going to give up. And, and so that's where my name became hyphenated. And so I became Chomp Glidden, not wanting to, um, you know, just keep Chomp and, and not take my husband's name at all because I love being his wife, but I do it maintaining my identity. Um, and so, yeah, finding that sense of identity was really powerful to me. And I think that's something that everyone um, needs to, needs to have as early as possible. Um, and you know just seeing the impact that it had on my teenage years of, of not knowing who I am um and the way that it impacted you know decades of my life and still you know having the, the consequences of those those choices that I made back then from not having that identity uh, but yeah that's that's me in a nutshell <laughs> it's a pretty big nutshell though <laughs> that's, a, that's a nutshell and I appreciate you opening up and sharing a lot there especially you, you really didn't you know, I love just listening sometimes and you just let it go. Um, so that was great. So, yeah. So, I mean, you had a lot of different options that you were planning to do. You, you mentioned you dropped out of school. You were thinking about being mm -hmm. an architect, you fashion. Um, I think you had something else that you said there too, but, uh, so, and yeah, then you yeah. had, yes, yes. Piano. And then, um, I, I wrote down here that, you know, I, it sounded like you had limited beliefs that you couldn't become these identities or people, whatever you want to call it. Right. You know, you could. not Absolutely. Become, yeah. yeah. So uh, it sounded like through your journey, you was able, you were able to fight that and beat that, but 
do you remember a moment in the in that time when you were trying to figure out which way to go probably before you got married and had kids you know how how you figured out what you were going to do like to break the limited beliefs um so breaking those limiting beliefs uh all came through coaching um back back when i was a teenager i was still you know suffering from those limiting beliefs all through um you know understanding that I, I couldn't go to university that means I'm not going to be an architect I'm not going to be a fashion designer I'm not going to be a concert pianist um and so I I, I got a job in retail um and you know and and after that I got a job in um uh business administration just uh doing accounts and reception and, and stuff and so I just kind of fell into these roles. And, and when I fell into that bookkeeping role, uh, I just found, oh, okay, well, I'm a good at this. I'm good at this because, you know, I'm I'm actually really, really good at maths. That's why I was aiming at being an architect because, you know, the the engineering side, side of my brain was just firing. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, bookkeeping worked for me but still with those limiting beliefs that this is all I can do because I don't have a university degree. Uh, but yeah, coaching um, helped me to really rewrite those and really go back to the, the narratives that we write for ourselves as, as young children of, of who we are and trying to make sense of the world around us. Um, as, as young children, we are excellent observers we, we notice everything around us, but we are very, very poor interpreters. And so the narratives that we all write for ourselves as children, um, I find in, in every every client that I've had, um, those narratives need to be rewritten because they were inaccurate. Um, they were inaccurate in that they gave a very false sense of these limiting beliefs um, and, and that sense of identity. Um, so... Yeah, uh, that, that that's one thing that I really love about coaching is just um, seeing that transformation of and and just that understanding of knowing how to rewrite those narratives and just blow the ceiling away on anything that you you want to do, uh, and then you've got like the the mindset that you can really intentionally infuse positivity and you know. Um, reach for the stars and actually reach them and actually achieve that uh you know if if there was any like there's this project that I'm working on that's really really huge uh it, it'll be years in the making of um a really fantastic venue that um, I'm trying to uh, put together if I gotten that idea before that mind shift change uh and removing those limiting beliefs I would have I would have just dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But knowing that some things can become possible, some things can be achieved that are outside our wildest dreams. Um, and so when I did get that idea, I thought, I'm going to go with this. And it's a big risk and it's going to take a lot of work. But, oh, my goodness, if I can pull this off, my goodness, I'm going to be on fire. Uh, yeah, and and so that excitement was just too um, compelling to 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 turn away from. That's awesome. Yeah, hopefully, whatever you're doing, hopefully it works out for you. Uh, <laughs> so you know the limited beliefs, right? Uh, do mm. you think it was the people you were around with at at the moment too that because said you can't do this, you can only do this, and now you went ahead and you see the coaching, and that completely changes everything because it's a whole different circle of friends, family? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and as much as I hate to say it, my ex-husband was holding me back. He, he didn't realise that he was. Um, I remember uh, being in this business forum chat thing and I was saying, you know, look, in, in every other way, he is my soulmate, except for understanding the these these dreams that I have of of, of my business uh, and he would often say look you know this isn't working for you you know you're having all of these these challenges maybe it's just not for you maybe just you know quit that and just go and get a job um and 
that that was really hard to to hear from someone who in every other way I thought was my soulmate um yeah and and since then you know there's a lot of quotes um that I've seen since then of um the, the impact that other people can have on you and the people who try to um talk you out of your dreams are only the people that have given up on theirs um and you know when when you're around people who who support and encourage you the difference really is amazing to to realize that there is there there is support and if you're not receiving the support that you feel you deserve or that that, that you feel you need to break some of those limiting beliefs then you really need to find some more people uh and and it, it will be painful to break some of those connections um we're, we're in the case of immediate family uh that's really hard to do so bronwyn how does somebody connect with you to find out uh, how you can help them with what you're doing or even get to learn more about what you are doing Sure, absolutely. Okay, so my website is evertrue.com.au. And what I offer through this website is uh, coaching, as I've been talking about. Um, I also have a uh, an online mastermind group, uh, which meets once a month. And um, in, in this mastermind, uh, it's great because you can connect with other business owners. And um, in this group setting, we can go through all of the things that are um, typically covered um, in, in, you know, learning about how permaculture uh, can be applied to business and you can develop uh, uh, this, this community um, within the group and, you know, really make some, some good friendships there um, as well as having other people, you know, you can bounce your ideas off other people and, and get some great feedback there. Um, I also provide permaculture business plans um, and so anyone in business, uh, I've, I've met too many of them, small business owners who don't have a business plan. And it's really hard to see um, because I know how important a business plan is and how much it has impacted my life and my business. Um, so I, I offer a service for um, creating business plans. And what, what I do with mine is I infuse it with these permaculture principles so that you end up with a business plan that is completely aligned with um, not just with your values and your um, your core principles, but also, you know, working in harmony with the earth and being sustainable. And, you know, it's just a really beautiful way to, uh, to make a living. Um, and then for businesses who want to be more sustainable, um, I offer a, a sustainability assessment. And um, this is just a really step one process of, of answering, you know, how do I start and, you know, what do I do and how do I start? So um, I offer that as well um, to work through um, what's happening in your business and what, what small changes we can start to make uh, to make your business more sustainable. And, that's and everything's yeah, on your website? Everything's yeah, everything's on the, on the website. Yep, evertrue.com.au. And I also have a blog and I offer free, um, monthly free online workshops. And um, yeah, there's all, every, every blog is connected to a, a downloadable resource. And then we uh, I create a, an online workshop to discuss using that um, free download. Yeah. Well, um, so I have a question I ask at the end of every episode. And yes. I know you shared a lot of stuff already and you learned a lot of stuff through your journey, but what are three key things you've learned and used along your journey? The three key things that I have used along my journey that I've learned um, is... Um, find your sense of identity and like really hammer that really get a very strong sense of your identity of who you are um and then discovering the power of mindset and and just the impact that can have on um on you on the quality of your life um mindset is is everything and then um the third thing that i would say really made a difference was finding not just what I was passionate about, finding my purpose, but 
this is my mission. This is my mission to um, spend, you know, to dedicate my entire career to helping businesses be more sustainable through permaculture. Um, and and every moment that I work towards that mission, um, it's it's not work. It's just pure joy. Glad you found something that you're very passionate about and you're pursuing it. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your journey and I hope we get to connect again and, you know, maybe we could dive deeper in some other things. Yeah. I'd really love that. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay.